Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to bring you some more news regarding Rise of Iron. I'm going to bring you some uh, good news and the bad news. But, uh, yeah, I'll get to the bad news part in a bit. But we're going to start with the good news here first. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick little teaser on all four PvP maps that uh, will be available to Destiny Rise of Iron. Uh, coming out on September 20th. Remember, one of them is a PlayStation exclusive. That is the Icarus map. So, we'll get to the uh, one on the bottom in a moment. So, as of right now, here's a, a quick little teaser for the first map that you get to play, which is Last Exit. And the location of it is on Venus. So here's the quick little teaser. So again, in Last Exit, it's a subway terminal on the Ishtar Sink of Venus that has been eroded away by the ocean. It provides players with a lot of close quarter combat opportunities as they explore the abandoned maintenance hallways along the tracks. Now Bungie quoted in a little bit here that uh, they find this map a bit interesting. Um, there's also an outdoor plaza. A lot of mayhem would happen out there. Now as you traverse, uh, traverse excuse me, down an escalator, you're in the main public subway station area. And on the far side of the map there are collapsed buildings, and you can easily run through some basements to get back into the larger courtyard outside that's fallen away into the ocean. <laughs> so uh, definitely a bit of a decent map to uh, start it off right there. Now there was no, no gameplay from uh, last exit though, but that was just a little bit of a teaser. And as you saw from the live stream from Bungie, two of the four maps were being played. Uh, one was uh, Floating Gardens, and the other one was Icarus. So we'll get to those two in a moment. Here's the second map called Skyline. You can find this in Meridian Bay, Mars. Here's the teaser. <coughs> yeah, I think I like that uh, that sidearm there. I'm pretty sure that's an exotic sidearm. Now, before I explain the, the next portion of uh, Skyline there, uh, I want to talk to you about a little bit of the weapons here. I think I know a couple of them off the bat here. Obviously, Galahorn and, Th and Thorn are two of the exotics that are coming. Um, what we saw from the VDOC there, there was an exotic machine gun called the Nemesis Star. Now it's almost identical to the Thunderlord when it comes to um, the impact and the stability, but it's not the same kind of weapon right there. But all in all, it's a very good uh, weapon there. Now I'm going to post a link at the description box below because we do have a couple other channels that explain the weapons and armor a hell of a lot better than me right there. But I've already explained a couple. So anyway, I'll just post a link uh, in the description box below there at the end of this uh, explanation video. So what you saw here in Skyline, there was a little bit of a teaser there as well. Uh, the details on it, by the way, Clovis Bray was an exoscience group that performed technical research and engineering in a variety of fields. Years ago, the group built this way station, which overlooks Mars' vast landscape. As a kind of welcoming center for human colonists looking to settle on the planet, the map here features a lot of vertical combat space. Now, what Bungie quoted in here, the map's been broken up into two parts. We have Interior Lobby, which is one part, and the other one being the Welcoming Center for Clovis Bray. It's a huge hologram with uh, Mars and the Traveler hanging up in the front, which is now the main light source in the lobby. A little bit more of a hotel vibe on the inside where people will get acquainted with Martian life. And then outside is the big courtyard overlooking the buried Dune City out in the distance. And on one side of that balcony, 
has like the uh, elevated rail guard which would bring people into the facility and the other side would be the shipping receiving cargo area so there you go so we explained the first two maps here so again uh, the the good news part here I'm I'm explaining these four PvP maps here and for those crucible players out there they're very good at PvP just give you a quick little explanation on how well you know these maps before Rise of Iron comes out. Okay, now this was the first of two. <coughs> Excuse me there. This was the first of two uh, maps there that was played on uh, Supremacy during the live stream. But in case you guys are new to this, here's the teaser from Floating Gardens and the location it. Uh, the loca location of it is at the uh, Pomona Mons Venus. Here's the teaser. Looks cool right there, and of course you can you can see the gameplay uh, video of it on uh, YouTube. Now the details here on this map here it focuses on the Vex. Now players will be treated to a stunning sunrise as they do battle in a massive circular shrine. Not the burning shrine, but just the circular shrine on Venus. And the Vex built, uh, built on top of the huge spire in Venus's upper atmosphere. Now what Bungie quoted here, <coughs> the map originally started out with, their, with this concept where the Vex would basically fall through this well and crack open so they can get their milk back. Well, it's, it's eventually their lifeblood, so that's the reason why they regaining their strength a little bit. Now it morphed to this shrine that the, that the Vex would go in the Vex would go in there and sacrifice themselves if it was their repair point. So obviously for example in uh, Vault of Glass right there uh, the Vex would sacrifice themselves into the Conflux. So the Guardians had to make sure they prevent that from happening or otherwise the entire team would be dead and the Vex would win. <coughs> You're running through these trenches of Vex parts and the Vex milk. <laughs> I don't know why they call it Vex milk here. <laughs> As if it was just falling off the side there and just being recycled into the next set of Vex. Now, it's a shrine and recycling center. It's good for uh, capture modes like uh, control, rift, anything, or salvage. So those are a quick little example for examples for capture modes. There's a bridge there in the middle of the map which is in between all three of those capture zones. It's now fairly exposed. If you hold that, uh, if you hold it down completely, you'll eventually have good control of the interior quarters of the map, which allows your team or guys to run in and start attacking whichever way you go. Okay, and the last one here is Icarus. And of course, this was the second of two maps that they played during the live stream in the Crucible gameplay of Supremacy. So here's the teaser of Icarus, which is located in Languid Sea, Mercury. So there you go, and of course, if you if you want to catch the live stream, you can always revisit it either on the Twitch website or a video on YouTube as of right now. So here's the details on this right here. Uh, Icarus is the name of a massive Golden Age solar collector that has been built into one of the creators on Mercury's surface. The sun looms large in the background as players duke it out in Mercury's harsh elements. The solar collector is full of mirrors used to collect the sun's energy. So there you go. And as mentioned, this is a, a PlayStation exclusive map. So Xbox users don't get it until year number four. And again, I'll explain the exclusives in just a moment. And again, what Bungie said right here. Um, it's a map sort of in the center of a huge crater. Now, if you're in the crater, <coughs> but you're not walking around on the edge there. So that's the situation. Uh, in the central point, where all these mirrors are sort of reflecting off the tower there, um, one side of that map there has the superheated uh, soul tanks that you can see off in the skybox there. 
We have a hub room in the center that you can use to quickly connect um, one side to the other there. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's also set up as this big radial exterior facility around this, uh, the tower there in the center where everything is being concentrated. So again, it's one of the more circular maps there. And a uh, lot of gameplay would be occurring in the circle. And the blitz around the center would basically give, give you an advantage. You can get past their opponents, and obviously what they are now calling it, the meat grinder. Yeah, that's that's going to be a brutal map there uh, if you're going to play on PlayStation in year three. So there you go. All four maps have been explained, and and of course, like I said, for players that do very very well in PvP, just give you a quick little breakdown on those four maps right there. Remember the Icarus map that is a PlayStation exclusive, not available for Xbox until year number four. <coughs> now before I go, folks. I promise I was just going to bring you the bad news. Yeah, I know, I don't want to talk about bad news, but I have to. Now, the bad news is... Remember the PlayStation exclusives that Xbox was bound to get in year 3? We're not going to get them. Nope. I, I know that upsets me a little bit, but... you got to live with it. So, the PlayStation exclusives that were bound to be coming to year 3 for Xbox will not happen. It has now been delayed until fall of 2017. And that's when, in fall of 2017, Destiny 2 would bound to come on out. Now remember, the year 2 exclusives that were bound to get for Xbox were the J-Rabbit Skull Rifle, Zen Meteor Sniper Rifle, both are exotics by the way, the Sector 618 PvP map, and the Echo Chamber Strike. Now we're bound to get those year 2 exclusives this year, but the bad news is that's not going to happen. And that's the problem. But I think I agree with that decision there because here's a little explanation why. The year three exclusives that uh, PlayStation will get, obviously the PvP, PvP map, which is Icarus, the quest line called the Show of Strength, and the ship that you complete for, that, well, you earn for completing that quest is is the uh, the ship there called the Timeless Kereshkova. Now I think, excuse me, I think what they're going to do is combine the year two and three exclusives into one huge exclusive for Xbox coming in fall 2017. So this clearly makes sense. So I, I agree with what, I agree with that decision right there. I, and I know it's a pain in the butt, but I, I agree with that decision right there. So, for Xbox users, coming in fall of 2017, the PlayStation exclusives that you'll get before you start playing Destiny 2, two exotic weapons, two PvP maps, the Show of Strength questline, in which you'll earn that new reward, which is the Timeless Kereshkova ship, and the Echo Chamber Strike. So, there you go. Uh, that, that's a little bit of better news, though, but, but you got to wait until year four to get both of those exclusives from years two and three combined. So hopefully I explained that well right there in the year two and three exclusives combined. Remember, Xbox will begin the year two and three exclusives next year. So that's the reason why it is being delayed until next fall. I know, that's that's a bummer, but we can wait a year. But I don't think we're going to wait long for Rise of Iron, which is coming out in about uh, a few weeks from now. So definitely getting closer. So there you go. That is your uh, quick little Rise of Iron news, explaining the four maps and the exclusives delayed until next fall. So there you go. All right, so we're going to end it right here, ladies and gentlemen, but we're not done with Rise of Iron just yet. Hopefully at some point next week, I'll bring you up to date on hopefully some information regarding um, the raid and get some info on the Devil Splicer enemies. And of course, if you want to catch the Supremacy gameplay and the Wretched Eye gameplay, which they were both taking place from Gamescom 2016, now you can. They're up on my channel right now. Definitely check them out. It is exciting. Rise of Iron is fast approaching, folks. Cannot wait to do it. I will be doing a walkthrough for sure. So until then, folks, thank you very much for watching, and until then, peace out.